A basket of eggs cost 60 cents in December 1942. But can you imagine? By 1945, September, the same basket of eggs cost $432.60. That's... Who can afford to eat eggs? Hi, I'm Xu Wen and this is The Library Report, a series where we meet interesting personalities and explore compelling stories from within and beyond our libraries. In this episode, join me as I check out the former Ford factory and find out how this industrial powerhouse played host to a series of events that would change the very fate of Singapore. Every year, Singapore commemorates Total Defence Day on the 15th of February. In 1942, it was the day Singapore fell to the Japanese. What you may not know is that the surrender took place right here. It may not look like it, but this plays a significant part in the tale of our nation. It houses almost a century's worth of stories which are integral to our local history. So I'm here at the former Ford factory and I'm very lucky to have Walter who is a professional tour guide and have been for what, 10 years? Wow, that's a long time. And you know what's amazing? He volunteers here as a docent. So Walter, why did you choose to volunteer here? I hope to share the Singapore history to anyone who walked through the door so that they have a better understanding of Singapore history because without history, there's no future. That's true. Yeah. Speaking of history, how old is this building? This building is actually 82 years old. It's like almost 100 years old. Yeah. Okay, I can't wait to get started on this tour. Can we go? Sure. Let's start the tour here. <laughs> so, this is a map of the Ford Factory. And if you were to walk up from the main entrance, you may have passed by the Walk of Shame. The Walk of Shame? Yes. That's where the surrender party actually walked up with the white flag. The four officers were greeted by the Japanese and the media. During the walk, one of the officers, Major Well, actually threw the white flag in disgust. And the Japanese made him pick up the white flag and walk over again. The reason for this is that the Japanese wanted to capture the moment to show to the world that the British have actually surrendered to the Japanese. And they wanted it captured perfectly mm. on camera yes. for everyone to see. Yes. This building was the assembly plant for the Ford factory. However, the role has changed over time. Now, when it started off as a car assembly for Ford factory, right, they were assembling Ford car. When war was looming in the 1930s, the British actually took over this place to assemble their aircraft. So what happened to the aircraft? What happened? Most of these aircraft were sent back to Europe to fight the war. Only a small handful of aircraft was here and they were destroyed by the Japanese when they attacked Singapore. And when the Japanese captured the Bukit Timah area, they made this factory their temporary headquarters. That's why when the British decided to surrender, they had to make their way here to sign the paper. During the Japanese occupation, the role of this factory changes again and become a butai, where the Japanese assemble Nissan military truck for their war effort. Of course, after the war, Ford came back to assemble the car until the 1980s, when they decided to give out the whole operation and sell the place to a private developer to develop into a condominium. And then, how did it become the museum it is today? Well, before the building being torn down, the National Heritage Board decided to preserve this place because a very important part of our history took place here, the signing of the surrender. So it was taken back by the National Heritage Board and they converted into a museum. At that time, the museum was known as the memory of the old Ford factories. Ten years down the road, they decided to revamp the whole place and today, we have what we are, the former Ford factory. So you said the signing of the surrender took place in this building, but the room that it happened in, is it still here? Yes, it is still here and I'm going to bring you there now. Okay. This is the room where the signing of the surrender took place between Lieutenant General Yamashita and Lieutenant General Arthur Perceiver. The table you see here is an exact replica of the original table. The original table was donated by the Ford Factory in the 1970s to the Austrian War Memorial for the effort of the Austrian soldiers in Singapore. Now, do you know what time did they sign the surrender paper? 
Uh, I think you might be overestimating my knowledge of history. <laughs> I've no idea. 620. There's a time that's signed that. What Percival did was he tried to delay the signing of the process. Hopefully that he can get some time for the reinforcement to come in. Yamashita cannot afford any delay. Therefore, he was actually very strong on the point that he wants Percival to surrender or not. You know, once you agree to surrender, you sign the paper. If not, he threatened to bomb Singapore again. So that's why uh, Percival has no choice but to sign the paper. So that was the reason. So at the time when he signed the paper, we noticed the time was 6.20. What happened in this room changed the fate of Singapore. If you want to know what transpired between the two generals, there are transcript for you to read. When Singapore fell, Singapore ceased to exist. We were renamed Shonanto. Shonan as light in the south, To as an island. Language will change to Japanese, time till to Tokyo time. Every morning, the residents of Sonanto has to face the direction of Tokyo to pay respect to the emperor. Then came Operation Suchi. This is to purge those anti-Japanese elements. Male aged 15 to 50s are required to report at reporting centres. At these reporting centres, firstly, there was a list of names to be called out. The names listed there are those people that boycott the Japanese products or raise funds to fight against the Japanese when Japan attacked China. If they are found to be a threat in any way, they will be called out and they will be loaded on lorries and brought to secret places. At these places, they were asked to dig trenches. After that, they will be machine gunned into the trenches. So these people literally dig their own grave. The other group of people will be loaded on trucks and brought to beaches. The way for the low tide, and these people were required to walk out into the sea, and again, they will be machine gunned. When the tide comes in, the body will be washed away by the tide. It is estimated there are more than 60,000 people massacred this way. During the Japanese occupation, the Japanese ruled Singapore with a very strict regime. The people that ruled Singapore at that time were the Kampatai, the military people. They ruled by fear. If one is found, guilty of an offence, crime, they will be severely punished and even lose their head. If the head is being cut off, they will hang on lampposts or high places to remind the people that this is a consequence of committing crimes. When Japan occupied Singapore, there was an embargo placed in Singapore. So there was no food brought into the country. There was a huge scarcity of food. Also, the Japanese were printing their own currency. We call it the banana notes because the $10 note has a picture of a banana plant. The value of the banana notes is supposed to be equal to the strict dollar. However, due to the scarcity of food, there was a huge inflation. The Japanese countered the inflation by printing more money and that caused more trouble. Food was getting very expensive. For example, a basket of eggs cost 60 cents in December 1942. That, that is 12 eggs. That is a lot because at that time, an average worker's salary could be in the range of 10 to $20. So it's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. But can you imagine? By 1945, September, the same basket of eggs cost $432.60. That's... Who can afford to eat eggs? Oh my goodness, I remember pictures in our social studies books. It was like wheelbarrows filled with banana notes to buy common groceries. Yes, so there was common. Can you imagine after the war, all these notes can be found on the drinks because it should be become worse. Waste paper, right? So due to the scarcity of food, many people are forced to grow their own food or make do with a lot of things. Mm. Okay. One of the common food that they plant are tapioca and sweet potato. Tapioca are more common because tapioca mature faster. Despite the difficult time, the people were able to weather through the situation. And thankfully, in 1945, the war came to an end. I'm going to bring you to the next gallery to talk about it, shall we? After the war, the people in Singapore once independent. Through the render constitutions, we gained self rule in 1959 and then we independent in 1965. Over here, we have the Civil War Memorial. 
to remember those civilians that were massacred during the Japanese occupation. The four pillars represent the four major races of Singapore. Every year on the 15th of February, there is a ceremony to mark the fall of Singapore. This memorial reminds us that we cannot depend on others to defend ourselves. We must defend our own country. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. I've definitely gained a deeper understanding of some of the things I learned in school. It was eye-opening, heartbreaking and really sobering. Lots to process, so thank you. You're welcome. If you want to find out more about the war and its legacies, you can walk into the former Ford factory and join one of the tours led by their volunteer guides. If you're interested in more exhibitions like this, or even volunteering for one, you can check out the details below. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like, subscribe, and also hit that notification bell so you know when the next video comes out. Till next time, see you!